Okay, right. So you probably didn't recognize those terms already, and that the right you should probably know by now that Bernoulli's equation is just that's a statement of energy conservation. Energy here had to equal energy there, right? So that's what we're going to do with pipes now and think about energies. But I also, I, this could bother me too. I also remember there were all these assumptions I had to make to use Bernoulli's equation to begin with. The flow had to be inviscid, so that's why it's good for. Um, plane wings because it's just air so the viscosity is essentially zero it also had to be right a steady flow well we gotta get that one right we check off that because all of our pipe flow questions they are talking about steady flow there's another one that's incompressible right i think we all agree on that one and then the fourth one we had to do was an irrotational flow Essentially, so velocity field had to be vector free. Don't really worry about this one. We definitely satisfy these two right here. But this one bothered me because I talked about viscous flow in a pipe, and now I'm going to state Bernoulli's equation to talk about energy conservation, which just seems a bit weird. So, what's the way to get around that? Well, we're just going to add a term. So, right, we're going to just think if we have a long straight pipe, flow rate going in, it's diameter that I can measure. It, inside it definitely does have a velocity profile that changes. It's not constant. Inviscid flows look like this, right? If there's no... If, if there's no viscous forces, then all then all velocity profiles just be constant. Okay, but really this is what's happening in the pipe, but I'm going to say something about this. So you should remember that that's actually that V, pro, v bar thing we calculated earlier. So that's one kind of workaround of this happening, but we'll just chug along. So we have V1, and then I have a... I'm just writing energies from getting from point one to point two. Okay. So, right, we get rid of these ones because here they're at the same elevation in the long straight pipe, which our analysis has a bunch of things about. What else do we do around here? Well, we're going to say... This is going to be a constant thing, too. I have a constant velocity through my pipe, so I'm going to get a pressure difference. Okay. But, right, I just remember he said that this isn't really true because we were talking about inviscid flows, and I'm talking about viscous flow in a pipe. So there's more energy that we haven't accounted for. So just, right, just write that out. So in terms of my system, I could have energy provided by a pump, Right. And then what I'm forgetting about are these, right, is the, is the viscous force, right, is the work done by viscous forces. So in physics one, remember you had a block sometimes and you moved it and you had this coefficient of friction. Even remember that it had a value of mu as well. And then you set up problems and you said to yourself, well, what was the work done by friction? Works energy. So this is kind of the, the main point about viscous fluids is there's a friction in them and you have to account for that loss of energy due to viscous forces. So for right now in this long string pipe, we're going to forget about the E-pump. This is where turbo machinery, part three of the class, we'll talk about. We're going to calculate actually these pump liquids, but solve this thing out and you'll get that. My pressure drop from point one to point B divided by this rho G, which puts it in a unit of height. So this is head loss. Right? This is equal to the energy done by viscous forces, so that's also just a rho g if we just divide the whole thing. And then we just call this thing the head, a head, right, the head, right, this, this, is, this is the head loss. They're both really head losses, but this, this expression right here, 
is the head loss. Or really, we actually call it a major head loss. Just notations that you have. Where the major head loss or the major energy requirements of all piping systems come from the fact that you have to overcome the viscous forces in this pipe. So it has a called term major, and you'll see why, because there's also something called minor head losses, but they always end up being a lot less than these major head losses. So for something like your project, the best thing to do to get a be good estimate would be to just calculate all the major head losses, and then your next iteration would be at, uh, put in the minor head losses. That's usually what you should always do, because a lot of times that minor won't really matter but it's good to get the value anyway.